joined by Ian Jones. He's a professor of virology at the University of Reading's School of Biological Sciences. Thanks so much for speaking to us. We appreciate it. You know, we know, of course, the death toll from the run-of-the-mill flu virus is multiple times, hundreds of times actually, higher than that of corona. But still, it's the coronavirus really is about the unknown. We just haven't been here before. So what worries you most? at this stage with this virus? I think what worries me most is that this virus will settle down in the population and become an endemic virus, a pandemic virus. That is to say that it will creep out from China and it will spread around the globe. And it associated with the number of infections will be a certain death rate, which quite honestly, we don't need. That is a serious fear. I mean, do you think then that the, we just heard what the WHO had to say, we've seen what China is doing. Do you think proper measures are being taken to stop that pandemic uh, from ever happening? Yes, I think all available measures are being taken. I think China has shown a tremendous uh, resilience to this and a tremendous ability to close down people movement. But it is a fact that the virus is popping up internationally, even with those measures in place. And in areas such as Indonesia and other countries where there may not be the facilities to provide quarantine, there's every likelihood that the virus will become an endemic problem. I'm not suggesting it's going to sweep around the world like a plague, but it will become, I think, the fifth human coronavirus causing regular respiratory infection. Okay. You know, sadly, today we heard that the doctor who is believed to have first exposed the coronavirus and was punished uh, for that actually died from coronavirus. Uh, how do you want to see, if I can put it, his legacy, you know, honored? Because it is dangerous to silence people like this. Yes, I think there are two things to say. One is, although this is unfortunate and, and distressing to hear, as far as I'm aware, generally speaking, healthcare workers have not been showing signs of infection when dealing with infected individuals. So it looks as if there isn't as much transmission in the healthcare settings as perhaps you might imagine. But the second point, which you alluded to, is of course, you have to be completely open with this. As we are seeing, the virus shows no sign of respecting international borders or international blockades, it will move wherever it's possible to do so. And so the only thing that we can do to be ahead of the game is to be fully informed about where it is and what it's doing. Right. Let's get back to perspective, though. And I mean, should people be panicking? We have to remember that SARS, at its worst, you know, killed about 800 people you know, while the run of the mill, as we said, flu virus kills thousands every year. Um, do people need to calm down or need there be a sense of panic so that this is taken as seriously as possible? No, I don't think panic helps. It doesn't help tackle the virus and it doesn't help put the right things in place. What you have to do is be absolutely professional about it. This is an infection, a new infection in the human population that is spreading at a certain rate. Healthcare officials, public health officials, virologists, medical people developing treatments all need to do what they have to do quietly and professionally in order to get ahead of the curve. And if we do that, then there's every chance that we will be ahead of the curve within a few months' time. Okay. Dr. Ian Jones, thanks so much for joining us there from Reading. We greatly appreciate it.